Welcome back. So now that I've got those new cooling tanks installed and I did like an endurance test, uh, this time I want to do a full power run to see how long I can maintain, maintain pretty much full power now that I've got all this extra cooling because uh, my suspicion is and you know, the goal was that the cooling system uh, or the coolant system is no longer the uh, critical path. It's going to be the oil um, the temperatures or it's going to be the turbine inlet temperatures, you know, aka the the exhaust gas temperatures running into the turbo. So that's what I'm doing right now, just doing um, this uh, full power run. And uh, we'll go over the logs here and uh, you can see how that worked out. All right, so this is what the logs look like from that run. And as you can see here, um, the first thing I did before I went to power, full power there was I turned the, the new heater loop on here. So this is the teal colored line down the bottom here. And you can see, you know, as soon as I do that, the temperature it had already warmed up to 134, uh, but then the temperature just sort of plummets down there to, you know, 76 degrees, which was pretty much the ambient temperature outside. And so, if we look at the time, um, so what I did was basically run to full power, and then I had I've got three different criteria for where I'm going to back off the power. One is the turbine inlet temperatures, which basically the exhaust gas going into the first turbo when that hits uh, a limit. And then the next one is the engine oil temperature, and the last one is the coolant temperature. So those are the things driving you know, my decision on when to actually uh, reduce the power. So you can see here at this point, the three, 396 time, let's just call it 400 seconds, right about there, if that's where I started out the run. Uh, I went full power and stayed at full power all the way to here. So that's 487, so basically about 90 seconds is where I had full power uh, sitting on the ground there. So what was the driving factor there? The oil temp there, which is the blue line there, it was 220, that's fine, I'm happy with that. Coolant temp wasn't even really barely getting warm again, it was only 98. So what was driving it here, if you look here, was the uh, turbine inlet temperatures, which is this orange one here, so 1682. Pretty much, you know, I want to sort of keep that at 1650. You know, I've had it go to um, well over 1900 before uh, for a short amount of time, so I know it's... It's not, nothing's going to blow up when I do that, um, but I prefer to keep it at 1650. That seems to be where everybody else seems um, to say, well, you know, set your maximum uh, temperature for any sort of uh, short amount of time, whatever. So that's where I, what, what my decision was to back it off there. And so what I did was I basically just dropped it to 80% throttle here, the orange one here, um, down to 80% throttle. So the fuel goes to 77 milligrams. And you can see uh, right away from then on out those, uh, turbine inlet temperatures, the exhaust gas just basically drops down to a manageable level there, 1470, and it pretty much stabilizes there. It just doesn't go, doesn't go up, doesn't go down. That's where it's happy to be. So that's good. Uh, so that's no longer the driving uh, factor on what I'm doing uh, with the throttle there. So um, here you can see still the coolant and the, uh, and the engine oil. Go back to this one. So it was interesting there, the engine oil actually dipped down and leveled out there for a second. And then after that, it started to climb again. And that was going to be my, uh, you know, driving factor because the coolant temperature was still way down here. And so ultimately, right about here, where it was uh, 239, I was like, well, I can see it's going to keep going up. Uh, so I decided just to uh, back off the power a little bit more and knowing full well that the oil temps would keep climbing. And so I just basically pulled it down to 50% throttle. And then you know the oil temps sort of still keep climbing but you know at a slower rate there and so then i ran it like that at 50 percent throttle there for a while and then uh ultimately could see it was getting to 250 there and i've sort of set 250 as kind of a limit i think i could quite happily go to 260 or 265 if i had to but for this test that's what i was going to do 250 and so at that point i just pulled the power back to where I had done the, um, the extended test before with a low power just to see where everything stabilized. So I pulled it back there, 28 milligrams of fuel. And right then it stabilized. And so the oil temperature there didn't get above 252 at that point. And so then the driving factor is just gonna be the coolant temperature. And you see even there, when I pulled it back the last time there, it was still only 196 on the coolant. So those new tanks have really done the job there and buying me all that time. So from the 400 and sec second mark now, 629 seconds, so 229 seconds uh, altogether um, before I pulled back to something that is, you know, not enough 
or barely enough, I think, to keep the aircraft uh, in level flight. And just to show you the comparison of what it did before, so when I did a static run on the ground before, if we overlay this, and I know it's a lot of stuff to look at, but if you just focus on the teal line there, the new one for the coolant temperature, and you compare that to this white line here, um, that's what it was before when I just turned the heater loop on. So that, that only had, you know, barely, not even a gallon of uh, coolant in that system. So as soon as it went around one time, um, it basically started climbing up and you can see it didn't take long before it caught up to the oil temperature there, which is this other uh, white line there. And you can see here that oil temperature being white and then the, the oil temperature on this particular run was blue. That coolant temperature here is definitely holding down that oil temperature as you'd expect. So you see the gap between those two. So it's definitely making a difference, not only buying me more time, but it's also you know, pulling the oil uh, temperature down, which is you know, ideally what I was shooting for in the first place. So it bought me all this extra time. So you can see in that particular run there, I had to drop off the power um, much sooner and you know, keep dropping it off uh, more quickly in order to keep the temperatures under control because at that point there, you know, the oil temp was already 250 right here and I had to pretty much, you know, give in. Whereas on this new run with a new setup, it was only, uh, you know, 233 there and I still had uh, headroom time to go. So that's bought me a lot more time there and you can just basically, you know, see that by that line. And uh, if we go and we compare that to um, the first flight and, you know, even Obviously, the first flight would have had some cooling coming in, but I'm even better than that right now. So the white line here is my power settings on the first flight. And this is the point here. And I've looked back in the video. This is the point here when I was just coming over the threshold um, when I pulled the power back, um, you know, to the last bit here. This is the white line, the power there. When I was coming over the threshold and then ultimately when I pulled the power back all the way when I was on the ground there. So you can see all the extra headroom I have here being able to maintain full power for longer here and then only have to drop it to 80% here rather than what I was doing there. I had it drop down more. And then you can see the coolant temperatures here, the same, similar to before, there's the oil temp and now the oil temp is down here. So again, this is on the ground and uh, you know not taking advantage of any of the air blowing through, um, you know, forced air, just basically what the prop's pulling through there. And now this new heater loop is really, um, really helping, you know, buy me all that extra time. So I'm pretty happy with how that's working out and uh, I think that's going to be um, the solution for you know the next uh, flight. And if you just want to look at the rest of the stuff here, it's all pretty much um, similar to what that static run was there before, uh, except obviously at full power. So the boost here, the 40.4, didn't get over that. So that lower boost is definitely better. And let's see what else. Um, the Lambda is you know 0.9 here. Um, and again, when it gets out on the runway, it doesn't. I, I think the lambda stays a bit higher because it's just getting better air in there. But anyway, it's it's not not very rich at all. Just I think 0.92 is probably the richest point, and then for the rest of it, it's over one. Uh, so it's you know burning nice and efficiently. So uh, yeah, that's all good. Pretty happy with that. And uh, so on to uh, the next job. Uh, but before we do that, let me just make one last comment about this whole coolant setup. So it is just designed here to buy me some extra time to get up to pattern altitude and potentially just to have the nose uh, down and level out and pull the power back and see where the temperatures stabilize. And then potentially with all the adjustments I've made, um, the temperatures may be under control, but at least this gives me a chance to look at it. Okay, so you may recall that on the first flight that I still had to put in some aileron trim there. The right wing was heavy, and uh, even though the aircraft was balanced by weight, so I'm under the impression there that there's still something causing it to want to roll to the right, and it's either torque from the engine or it's uh, uh, something aerodynamic. And, you know, I've checked the wings, and I don't see a problem with them, but it could be the winglets. So uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to make this guy, or I'm putting together this guy, basically... Um, a tab there it's 12 inches wide and about four inches deep there and I've set it to 20 degrees right now so instead of just having to always have the aileron trimmed out this will be um, putting a downward force there uh, on that left wing and it'll just be a case of uh, dialing it in uh, over time with with different testing but at least I won't have to put so much uh, aileron trim in there 
um, if the aircraft is out of balance. So anyway, we'll see how that plays out. And before you get all excited and say, oh, this is some band-aid you're putting on there, this is quite common uh, on aircraft to balance out any uh, imbalance in the aircraft. So, yeah, don't get too excited. So we've been getting some nice weather, but a little bit breezy. Uh, but the next thing I wanted to do was dial in the elevator trim again. So I've got that extra weight in the nose now. The CG's more, more forward. Uh, so I, I want to take it down the runway and also to I've got that new trim spring and so I need to dial in the elevator trim again just to have it so it's uh, you know set for takeoff and how I'm doing that is similar to how I did it last time just sort of add a little bit more each time take it down the runway to about 80 knots and see where uh, the nose wheel is just sort of coming off and so I've just dialed in a little bit more than I had um, the previous time for the first flight because, you know, to compensate for that extra weight. And I've still got more um, available. In other words, there's still more, a little, just a little bit more on the linear actuator. Uh, but today when I tried this, uh, when I wanted to try this, uh, runway 17 or 35 wasn't really compatible because there was a, a pretty stiff sort of eight, nine knot crosswind going directly across that runway. So I went out on uh, four and had to work in around uh, one of the training aircraft there. And so I, they've also got uh, taxiway Charlie is closed, so you've got to actually back taxi on four there. So I'm doing that while there's somebody else in the pattern doing touch and goes. Um, fortunately, the tower is coordinating, so that's good. Uh, but anyway, you can see I've got the elevator trim in there quite a lot. And I just wanted to take it down the runway here and, and uh, see how it uh, worked whether it was going to get the nose off for me or not. So first time, apart from when I landed the aircraft on the first flight, first time actually doing a run down runway four. It's a little bit bumpy. There's a spot um, somewhere in the middle there where there's a bit of a dip. Uh, at least I've been warned about that. I've, I haven't really noticed it that much. I guess it's there somewhere. Uh, but anyway, so as you can see here, just doing a taxi back and then uh, you know full power a little bit of a right crosswind still here because the wind was uh, I think it was basically one zero zero at about eight and I'm on runway four So did the nose come off? I'll let you guys be the judge here. You can see I've got you know a little bit more elevator in there than the previous times when I had it dialed in, obviously to compensate for that uh, more forward uh, CG. So it should be coming off there. I think it's off. It looks to me like it's off. And in this case, I actually hadn't added any back pressure at all. Um, just basically the trim that was there so um, the maximum speed there I got to there I think was 80 knots or something um, anyway but I believe the uh, elevator is now trimmed in so uh, that's all that's left to do now um, before the next flight so I'll be planning that all out I think it's going to be um, departing on 17 again coming around for a potential landing on 4 if there's a problem uh, if not continue on a downwind for 1.7 and then um, you know land on come around and land on 1.7 if there's a problem and if not fly along 1.7 um, you know at altitude pattern altitude and if I don't have any problems uh, come around and do uh, right base and land back again on 4 because most likely that's where the winds will be coming from and that's been the pattern lately these northeast winds so I think that's what's going to be 
uh, the profile. But anyway, I'll be thinking about it some more and uh, figuring it all out and then uh, look for the right weather conditions and just make sure that I get everything else sorted out and we'll see if we can get a second flight in. So that's my video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.